this very spot four years ago when Israel did nearly the same thing to Gaza they're doing right now. Operation Cast Lead. They did it during an election. They did it in full view of the whole world. And they did it with the blessing of the United States. The United States government, President Obama has been, was silent when the attack happened. The President Obama was silent after the attack happened and hasn't condemned Israel since. We saw what Israel does in the meantime. The attack on the live in Marmara. Nine unarmed civilians killed on a ship boarded by Israeli commandos. Not to mention the slow strangulation of Gaza through the blockade, the illegal blockade under international law that allows Palestinians to barely eke out an existence, let alone a dignified one. A report was released well, a couple weeks ago showing Israel tried to calculate how many calories it would take to keep the Palestinians barely alive in Gaza and allow that much food in. We have to continue to oppose what Israel is doing around the world and continue what Israel's doing, continue opposing what Israel's doing in Gaza. This is a great turnout from Rochester and we need to continue and show our support tomorrow. Uh, I want to invite uh, and the students here that are organizing on campuses because I know over the last couple of years the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement has gained a lot of ground and is beginning to expose Israel uh, as Israel exposed itself through brutal attack after brutal attack. So if any students here that want to talk about organi the organizing they're doing on their campus, I want to invite you guys to come up. Palestine is not talked about very much in the United States at all. The media has a stranglehold on the dialogue over what Palestine is and what the struggle for Palestine is. First off, the United States funds Israel's military to the tune of $3 billion at least every year. Some years it's up to $5 billion. Israel's oppression of the Palestinians would not be possible without taxpayer dollars. And that's something part of the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement we need to enforce here in the United States. Defund Israel. Defund the military in Israel. Palestinians would not be under this oppression without U.S. dollars, and we need to address that. Second, the political cover that the United States provides, blocking every UN resolution, blocking any semblance of international law being applied to the state of Israel. Well, the double standard is just glaring compared to what we say about other countries around the world, about Iraq, about Afghanistan, about uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi. All sorts of people are accused of, of killing all their civilians, but Israel is suddenly immune from the same kind of charges, from the same kind of crimes. And we need to stop, we need to enforce international law on Israel. And third, don't forget that Obama's drone program in Pakistan and around the world is based off Israel's drone program. The targeted assassination, extrajudicial assassination, is based off of Israel's model, off of Israel's program of extrajudicial assassinations. The military connection between the United States and Israel is inseparable. And so when we talk about ending the oppression of Palestinians, we need to talk about ending the oppression of Pakistanis, ending the oppression of Afghanis, of, of, of Iraqis, and people all over the world the United States has its military occupying. And the last thing I'll say is the last year, it's not been all doom and gloom. The last year we've seen movements for democracy and revolution in Egypt and Tunisia and many other places. What they've shown is there's an alternative in the Middle East. There's an alternative to occupation. There's an alternative to dictatorship. There's an alternative to neoliberal austerity. And that's democracy. That's mass movement. That's dignity. That's justice. And Palestine is central to that project. It's inseparable from that project. And so that's why if we're organizing to support Egyptians, we're organizing to support uh, Pakistanis from drone attacks, we need to be organizing for Palestinians. It's all part of the same project. And I think that's the message we got last year, that another world is possible. And this is part and parcel of fighting for that.